think we've got everything set up here. It's a little bit windy. What is up guys? Adrian Nickelodeon coming at you from sunny Sydney, Australia. We're on the banks of the Windsor River. This isn't the Windsor River. This is the Hawkesbury River in Windsor. <laughs> so today we're doing a review on the Rurock Atlas 2.0. Rurock were good enough to send this to me uh, a while ago, actually. I've been riding with this helmet for a couple of months now. I didn't want to do a review as soon as I got it because I wanted to give it a good try out and see how it was. And yeah, that's what we're going to do today. So if you guys watch many motor vlogs, I'm sure you guys would have seen a review by now. Most of the big motor vloggers out there have already reviewed this helmet. So I just want to go over some of the features that I like and don't like about it and just some basic features of the helmet. Firstly, it is stupid light. This is unbelievably light. I've got an AGV Pista GP which is a race helmet and I think this Rurok helmet is lighter than that helmet. I will have to confirm, I'll lay some footage over in the corner here of the weight of both of the helmets but this is definitely a light helmet. It's constructed of T300 aeronautical grade carbon fiber. All of the Rurok Atlas 2.0s are constructed exactly the same. This one here is the raw carbon, so you can actually see the carbon weave all over the helmet, which is pretty sweet. Most of the other ones are painted in some pretty wicked designs, so you can't actually see the carbon fiber, but the paint definitely makes up for it. They've got some really, really cool designs, especially some with the uh, teeth that come across the chin bar here to make the whole thing look like a giant skull. Pretty awesome. All right, let's get into the best thing I like about this helmet. The best thing I like about this helmet, other than its stupid light, is the, if I can put this down carefully, this here is called the Fidlock. So it's a little bit different to the traditional D-rings that we're used to on our, on our other helmets. This is patented technology. I don't know why every other helmet manufacturer isn't using this. Rurok have tested this, they actually picked up a motorcycle with this in their workshop. So it's stupid strong and really, really easy to use. Watch this. That's it. It is locked. You can unlock it by simply pulling this tab. That's it. Done. It's a little magnetic... I don't know what it is. I guess it's a, it's a little magnetic clip in here that locks onto this thing here. And it's, fl it's, it's flawless. I mean, watch this. That's it. It's locked. Getting this helmet on and off is a pleasure just because of this. I've got a beard and when I use the D-rings, I always thread part of my beard through the D-rings and it pulls on me while I ride and stuff like that. With this, this thing, this helmet, I think it's made for guys with beards. It's amazing, it really is. So the Fidlock is probably my favorite feature of this helmet. Let's get a little bit of light on this for you. So here it is again. So the Fidlock system. Amazing. So you can get the helmet on and off really quick. There's another little latch on the inside here. I'll try and get some light onto it. There it is. So you've got a vent on the front. So up is closed, down is open. Huge vent on the front for airflow. The whole helmet flows a decent amount of air. It feels like there's an air curtain when you're wearing the when you're wearing the helmet, it feels like there's air constantly rushing over your face and down through the bottom of the helmet. Now granted, this helmet does usually come with a chin curtain, but I took that off because I've got a beard and I need a little bit more space on the front here. Pretty compact shape, it's light, it, you don't really feel it on your head when you're riding with it. It doesn't have a pointy chin on the front here, so it doesn't get caught up on the shoulder pads on your leather jacket or on your motorcycle armor, which is a big bonus. The field of view is insane on this thing. Like, I had a big issue going from my old helmet, my old, old helmet, which was a KVC VR2, had awesome field of view. I went to the AGV Pista GP and I was a little bit let down because you couldn't see as much out of the sides of the helmet out of your peripherals. Now, I get why the AGV Pista GP is a race helmet. You only really need to look at what's happening in front of you. It's not really built for the road, but these guys here at Rurok, they really have built an unbelievably awesome urban helmet. Field of view on this thing, I can't see any parts of the helmet except for the, the nose piece just here. If I'm concentrating and looking out of the front of the helmet, I can't see any part of the helmet except for the little, a little bit of the nose piece down on the bottom here. That's unbelievable. I can't believe there's so much clarity and vision available out of this helmet, especially because from what I've heard, this is the this is the Atlas 2.0. Apparently the Atlas 1, your head sat a lot closer to the front of the helmet. With the Atlas 2.0, they've built it so that your head sits a little bit further back in the helmet. And even with that, you've got amazing field of view. Clear peripheral vision, like it, it's, it's unbelievable. Light helmet, 
you can see so much out of it. Another thing I like about the helmet is that it's loud and not loud in terms of wind noise but loud in terms of the the lining that they've got on the inside here. It's gonna it's it's a little bit hard for me to show you but where your ear sits inside the helmet there's nothing actually pushing up against your ear. There's no padding, there's none of the lining is sitting up against your ear, muffling noise. You've got like a little cutout where your ear sits. So you can hear everything. You can actually hear, I don't know how many of you guys have conversations with people while you're still wearing your helmet, but sometimes it's a little bit hard to hear people. When you're wearing this helmet, you can have a conversation with someone and it's like you're not wearing a helmet. You can hear everything as if you weren't wearing a helmet. Now, there is a downside to that. I've got a really loud exhaust on my bike. I'm running the SC Project CRT, which is stupid loud. I need to wear earplugs while I'm riding now because the sound travels so cleanly through this helmet that it's actually blisteringly loud when I crack the throttle. With the AGV Pista GP, I could sort of get away with it a little bit because the internal liner of the helmet sits up against your ear and muffles it a little bit. Some downfalls of having the lining pushing up against your ear, I don't know if anyone gets claustrophobic in their helmet, I certainly do, especially on hot days, is that there's no airflow. And with the Rurok Atlas 2.0, because there's nothing sitting up against your ear and your ear sits it's in this pocket the air that flows around the helmet flows around your ears and cools you down as well so don't recommend this for winter riding do recommend it 100 percent for summer riding it's a very cool helmet not just in looks but also in terms of comfort there's plenty of airflow and yeah oh one other thing the uh the vents on the side here so these these aren't actually vents apparently heaps of people were complaining about wind noise on the atlas 1.0 so these are these are relics from that they've actually closed off these vents so you don't get all the wind rushing in to where your ears are yeah so far so good pretty happy with the helmet i've been using it most days that i ride unless i need to film a video because i haven't attached a gopro to the front of this yet the visor has some indentations when you open it one two i think there's another one three yep a little bit a little bit hard to do with one hand but yeah nice indentations to keep the visor up if you want to keep the visor up there's also a locking pin on the visor to lock the visor down now i found that my one was a little bit tight i watched baker x derek's review of the rurok helmet and he also had some issues with his locking pin it felt a little bit too tight so the locking pin goes just there. I don't know if you can, you should be able to see there's a little hole just there. So I've actually unscrewed it out of the helmet. So that when I close the visor and push it all the way down, it doesn't lock. Because I was almost breaking my thumb trying to get this thing to come up. I don't know if it was just my helmet. BXD had the same issue with his helmet. I've unscrewed it. What I'm going to do is sand down the little pin that it comes with just to um, just to shorten it by about a millimeter and then screw it back in. And it should be uh, it should be a okay. It shouldn't lock too hard. That's the only real gripe that I have with the helmet was the locking mechanism on the visor. Other than that, man, I don't know what to say. Like. The Fidlock alone, it's just unbelievable. I don't know why all helmet manufacturers don't have that. Here's a look at the back of the helmet. Dot and ECE certified. It is, it's, a, it's nice. I like it. I really like, I really like the raw carbon. I reckon it looks freaking amazing. Oh, sorry. Wait, guys. There is one thing that I. There is one other thing that I don't like about this. The uh, the visor locking mechanism. Now, granted, I haven't changed the visor. I shouldn't really not like this because I haven't actually used it, except for changing the visor to this smoke visor. I don't change the visors very often or at all, really, unless I'm riding at night time. But um, you've got a keyless screw here that just. It's a quarter turn and it comes undone. Let's see if I can do it. Hold on. There you go. Now, this is what I hate about this thing. This thing, I feel like if you're really, really stupid, which I am sometimes, you could lose this and not have the ability to change visors because you've lost this little pin because it detaches from the helmet. I don't know why they didn't build something into the visor like most other helmet manufacturers have or something into here. I don't know, like, 
I get that the, the last Ruroc Atlas 1.0, you had to use a special tool to remove this, and now they've done, they've made it so you can remove it with your fingers, but I still think that this could get lost. So yeah, I don't know, it's not really a big issue. You just gotta be careful about it, I guess. And then uh, putting the, the pin back in, I'm gonna try and do this with one hand. No, I'm not. I'm gonna hang you guys off the top of my shirt. Here we go. Yeah, so putting this thing back in, you just push it in, and then it's a quarter turn, and that's it. Yeah, so I don't know if they're going to change the locking mechanism on the next Rurok. I mean, it works. There's nothing wrong with it. I just feel like that pin could easily get lost. That's it. Other than that, I like the helmet a lot. Like I said, I've been riding with it almost every single day. Rurok are apparently going to release a little GoPro sticky mount that sticks on the front here. So you can attach a GoPro camera to the helmet without having to stick something to the front of the helmet. So waiting for that to come through. And then I think I'm going to make this my everyday helmet and retire the Pista GP for a little while because I'm really loving it. I really am enjoying this helmet. So anyway, guys, I might leave you guys with some footage of me riding around with this helmet on and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode.